Some changes already. Other changes? Eh? You've done a lot of work, but not all the changes should go in one commit. Let's use partial commit. In the commit window, look at your changes. Skip the second file by clicking the checkbox. In the first file, open the diff and deselect some of its changes. Now when you commit, just those parts are included. The unselected parts remain as changes. That's a quick glance. Let's take a closer look. You sit down to do some work. It's going well. You're in the zone. You have an idea for some other work, something for next week. Exciting stuff. You can't help yourself. You write it down. You get a phone call. You forgot a change in something that you did last week. Need to make a small fix. Back to what you were doing at first. You wrap it up. Time to ship it with a good commit message. But there are actually three units of work slotted for this commit. Today's work, next week's work, and last week's work. Each should get separate commits. Of course, you could just do a single commit with part of the commit message for each unit. Fast for you for now, but not fast for others trying to decipher the commit history later. You could roll back the second two changes, then manually reapply them. But that's how shall we say inefficient. You could use the underappreciated change list or stash facilities. Maybe there's a quick and easy solution. Quick and easy, time for partial commits. What's a partial commit? Here's a website that explains it. That paragraph describes exactly what we want to do. The how may be a little huh, cumbersome. Fortunately, our IDEs have been putting a pretty face on this operation for a while. Let's return to the commit tool window and walk through committing just the work we want. First, leaving out an entire file, just click the checkbox on any files. Sometimes you have a big directory hierarchy of files that might have been copied in. Leaving them out is easy, just deselect the parent. You could even go in and reselect just a couple. Next, leaving out part of a file. Bring up the diff tool, find the change you want to admit, and click the checkbox. If you change your mind, reselect it. This is just like the normal diff tool. You could scroll through changes in a file, between files, use the keyboard only. All of those productivity tips apply. When you finish, you'll see the checkbox has a dash. That means it is between checked and unchecked. Think of it as mm, some. You do your commit as normal. It leaves the unselected changes out of the commit, meaning they are still there. You could continue your process to select the changes for next week's commit with a good commit message. Then the changes for last week's commit again with a good commit message. There you've processed all the changes. Your commit history is easy to digest later. Want to see what happened behind the scenes? The Git Tools log tab shows the commands issued. This is what you would have had to type. Jumbo commits are bad. Our IDEs, as usual, can help with the janitorial work of keeping your history tidy. You can read about this and more in the IDE help pages, which also cover the next levels in of moving changes to a change list. And of course, click subscribe. You'll get one of these a week, guaranteed-ish. Finally, don't forget to visit this tip in the guide where we help you learn your tools, developer to developer. Thanks for watching.